I'd like to introduce uh, first uh, Keith Femian. Uh, Keith is the chairman and founder of U.S. Inspect LLC, the nation's largest provider of residential and commercial property inspection services. It's headquartered in the Virginia suburbs of Washington, D.C. U.S. Inspect is the dominant inspection services company in the United States, producing more than 150,000 inspection reports annually. Uh, the company employs field and office personnel across the country and manages a network of thousands of independent contractors. Prior to founding the company, Keith worked for seven years with the international accounting firm KPMG. He's a former certified public accountant. Uh, Keith received his Bachelor's of Business Administration in Accounting from the College of William and Mary in Williamsburg, Virginia, where he earned a full four-year athletic scholarship and captained the football team. Keith is uh, president of the Washington, uh, D.C.-based Youth Leadership Foundation, a supplemental academic and character formation program serving disadvantaged youth in our nation's capital. The second oldest of seven, Keith and his three brothers and three sisters grew up in a military uh, Navy family, moving often before settling in Virginia Beach when he was nine years old. Keith and his high school sweetheart and wife of 28 years, Kathy, are the proud parents of three beautiful daughters and reside in Northern Virginia. So I give you Keith Fimian. Folks, a pleasure to be here with you this morning. I've had the great privilege of living the American dream. And that dream and life of freedom and opportunity and unlimited possibility that has always been the birthright of every American and the hope of every immigrant to America is passing away before our eyes. Our nation has been led into a valley of debt and deficit spending and overgrown government so deep and wide that our own children for the first time in our history face a, face a future less certain than any generation in our history. Our parents, our grandparents and those who came before them were given a great gift. They took care of that gift. They worked to better it and they handed it down to us. Today, that gift has been turned into a mountain of debt and a sea of entitlement programs, all of them headed for bankruptcy. The blood, sweat, tears, courage, and sacrifice of our forefathers is being squandered by people who know nothing of duty or honor or virtue. And those of us who love this country and look forward to its future, on behalf of our children and grandchildren, have got to ask ourselves a very difficult question. Will we receive a land of freedom and opportunity? that shining city on the hill, the greatest country ever to exist in the history of the world, and leave it a place of dependency and decline. None of us here have any intention of making that mistake, but folks, if we do not act quickly and courageously and decisively, we will not avoid it. The stakes are the highest they've ever been in our lifetimes. But we have the opportunity to set things straight. The problem is the time to set things straight dwindles now before us as the clock ticks. The time to reverse these dangerous policies so menacing to our children dwindles. I'm running for Congress because I think Jerry Connolly is part of the problem and folks I think I'm part of the solution and I say that because like you I run a company. Uh, I started it in a room above a garage 24 years ago. Today that company U.S. Inspect is nationwide and I have had the great privilege of living that American dream. Start, uh, by way of background I would be only the sixth current or former CPA in Congress. I would be only the 12th entrepreneur or, uh, uh, in Congress. I would be only the fourth patent holder in Congress. Uh, I was alarmed when I first found these numbers, but it's important that we have people in Congress who understand business and who know how to create jobs and balance budgets. The hardest thing I ever did in my whole life was start my company. I had $150,000 as a 29-year-old because of a pro football trout. I put the money into real estate, and, and I multiplied it. So I put 50 of that, 150 into the company. The other 100 I used to live on for a year and a half. And the only thing I promised my wife was I wouldn't put the house at risk. Well, at the end of a year and a half, um, the house was at risk. <laughs> and it was no fun. Uh, anyway, without getting into the details, we, we, we made it, but it was very hard. And it took me eight years to, before I had enough money in the bank to make today's payroll and the payroll two weeks from now. Eight years I lived hand to mouth. You know what I'm talking about. You entrepreneurs know what I'm talking about. And it was a gut-wrenching period. 
worried that someone was going to come up behind me, whack me, and take my business. Um, but we made it. And I am so grateful to have been born in a place called America where that can happen. Folks, the only solution to the problems our nation faces is growth. We grow, we win, we don't, we lose. It's pretty much that simple. What does it take to grow? It takes an entirely new kind of leader than the kind of congressmen and women we have today that have never created jobs. My opponent has never created a job, does not know how to create a job. He cannot fix what's broke. He and people like him have broken what is broken. We are here because of them, not in spite of them. Uh, and I say that not in a mean-spirited way. I say it as a simple point of fact. As an entrepreneur and small businessman, I know the challenges of running a small business in Northern Virginia. And uh, the people we have in Congress right now, as I say, do not. That's why they vote for trillion-dollar stimulus bills that will do nothing to help small business. It's why they vote for cap-and-trade energy taxes that will drive electricity costs through the roof. It's why they support car check legislation to empower unions to run wild. It's why they vote for health care bills that will fine small businesses $2,000 per employee for not providing health insurance. It's why they vote for legislation requiring businesses to file 1099s for any business conducted with an individual or another entity of $600 or more. And that, by the way, came in the health care bill. This is the most anti-business Congress in history. And it shows. And I'm worried for the future of my children. I never dreamed I would ever do this. Let me tell you, some of you all know this. I love running a company more than you can imagine. It's practically the funnest thing a person can do in America, I think. It is, it's, it's wonderful. But my company is threatened, just as many of yours are. Because if we borrow the amounts of money we, we are borrowing, continue to borrow it, Credit will be, continue to be squeezed. Opportunity continue to be reduced. The greatest thing America's got going for it is small business. If our taxes go down, our energy costs go down, our health care costs go down, do you think we're taking that money out of our companies? No way. We're going we're gonna, to uh, we're gonna invest that money to try to grow our companies. Those costs go up. Not only are we not going to invest, we're letting employees go. I let 55 employees go a year and a half ago. I've never had to let anyone go. A year later, half didn't have jobs. In this market, half did not have jobs. It could not be more pressing that we get people in Congress who know how to fix the economy, who know how to create jobs. And the vast majority of the people there, including my opponent, do not. Folks, Washington is broken because its bond to the American people has been broken. What goes on there is no longer about us. It's about them. It's about a political class elected to serve us who care about nothing but serving themselves. A political class elected to the high positions in government who have been in all regard to the consent of the governed. I'm not going to Congress to complete my life. I'm going there to break China. And I don't mean that recklessly, but I mean that in a very determined way. I'm 54. I don't need the job to feed my family. I want the job because I'm principled, and because I'm principled, I think I can make a difference. Give me your vote, and I will amplify your voice. Give me your trust, and I will renew your confidence. Folks, give me this seat, and I will give our government back to you. Thank you. God bless you, and God bless America.